And welcome inside the Backstage Pass here for a Thursday, kind of our Friday here because we're off tomorrow and looking forward to a good three-day weekend out there. Happy Easter to everybody, uh, early Easter out there, good Fridays tomorrow, and then definitely we're back with some great shows coming up next week. Uh, Jeannie Seeley is going to stop by, looking forward to talking with her, Miss Grand Ole Opry Royalty, and of course some other cool things uh, too as well. I actually just got word today, uh, Miss Callie Shore may be coming on the program here in about two or three weeks here. Uh, the backstage pass doing some big things out there for her. That was the secret from the last half hour. I told you I was going to put out there again. Brandon Morrell and Kirsty Krauss here on the backstage uh, pass presented by Tour Guitars and Bangtail Whiskey. And please welcome in a guy that uh, is a huge, huge, huge traditional country fan. And when you hear him sing, you understand why it's Johnny Cash meets a little bit of Chris Young here. Josiah Siska on the backstage pass. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going, guys? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> <Doing> <laughs> <laughs> just pleased to have you here on the program looking forward to talking about this man but because uh you've been around music your entire life and before i get to the idol stuff and i talk about this uh, classic country and you know bringing kind of that 90s sound to the uh, traditional modern country day sound here talk about just being around uh music your entire life and then kind of what inspired that you know playing playing learning instruments and doing vocal lessons and things like this and then you put it all on the line when you, you got on season 15 of American Idol did a little Johnny Cash. Talk about your story, I guess, in the roundabout way. <laughs> Man, I, it's a it's a it's a wild story, you know. It it, <laughs> it was. Uh, I, I grew up just listening to old music. It was it was mm -hmm. kind of always implemented in my life. Uh, every song I'd listen to, it'd be at least 30, 40 years old, you know. And and that's just that's something about my soul. I don't know. There's there's something, and it ain't just always country neither. I love traditional country, but like. Old, I'm talking, I'm cranking Queen. I'm cranking up, like, I'll listen to Billie Holiday on a Saturday <laughs> and just kind of hang out with a cup of coffee. Like, it's it's always just kind of been something that I love to do. And then I started playing music uh, and playing the songs that I listened to. Um, really started with piano. I've been playing piano since I was about three years old. And mm -hmm. that's my main instrument. I always tell people I'm not really a guitarist. I mean, I can do it, but uh, but I'm a, I'm a pianist. I love to play the keys. So, uh so yeah, man, and, and just going from that to eventually picking up the guitar and, and learning all those classic country songs. I started learning Johnny Cash because I wouldn't have to change the key. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have to slap a capo on. I was just, you know, three chords of the truth. You get the E, the A, and the, and the B7. I hang my head and cry. And then you do the whole whatever. <laughs> but uh, went from that and then did American Idol, which was quite a trip. And, and, and that was a lot of fun. And I did uh, Johnny Cash on that. And mm -hmm. in that audition, I think online it says I was 18, but I was 17 when I did that. Uh, I think mm -hmm. I just graduated high school. And my girlfriend at the time told me, you should do Idol. You should do Idol. I'm like, no, nah, I ain't going to do no Idol. <laughs> I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. But I picked I picked Johnny Cash. I went out there. I did it, and I uh, went out to Hollywood, and that was a lot of fun. And it was a really cool experience that gave me a great introduction to the music industry and really what I'd be doing in my future. I didn't know it at the time, but uh, it opened a lot of beautiful doors, and I ran through them. Awesome. Good stuff. No doubt. I, you know, I actually I heard about you. You've had quite a big year. Uh, we have a mutual co-writer, Brandon Will. And he was telling me all about you. And so I remember looking you up a while ago. So it's very nice to have you on the Backstage Pass. Talk to us about your writing journey and when, you know, when you started the piano and picked up the guitar and started writing, what, what did that kind of timeline look like for you? Oh, man. Wow. I love Brandon. He's one of my best friends. We've been writing it's together so for years. Oh, his melodies are incredible. His lyrics are great. I, I write with him all the time. Um, I cut a song that we wrote together, too, that I'll be releasing in the future. So that'll be cool. Mm. That's um, exciting. Yeah, he's, he's good folks. Uh, songwriting, it's it's like a storytelling for me. You know, that's how I like to look at it. It, it, it. I share a part of my soul when I write a song because it's something that I'm feeling at the time, whether I'm sad, happy, in love, or, or just crazy view about the world you know whatever it may be I, I put it on paper and and I, not often when I write a song do I sit down and go you know what are we trying to write today what are we trying to write today it's usually just the mindset of let's make something and let's make it beautiful if it's a love song it's a love song if it's upbeat it's upbeat but whatever happens let's just do it to the best of our ability and I try to do that with every songwriting I've met some really cool songwriters moving to Nashville and being in town playing uh, playing around town you, you meet a guy at the bar I, Brandon Will I'll never forget he came up to me we were, I, I got done playing a show like two three years ago he comes up he's like man you got a cool voice and he just throws out some song title about singing low or just something and i was like you know it started this whole whatever just small talk yeah, conversation cool. outside a That's bar cool. yeah, yeah. 
Let's so do it. <laughs> it's it, Nashville's a great town to write music in. It really is, and there's so many mm -hmm. talented writers here. So I love love co-writing and uh, sharing my stories with folks. Man, look at that comment box. Uh, speaking of the devil, look at that comment box, Kirsty. Look right there too. I'll let you uh, see how he's a bud. Brandon Josiah says, Siska. "Hey, yep. bud, Josiah and Siska in the house. In the house. Hey, Kirsty, nice to see you both." <laughs> and so it's so good to see him tuning in there. Oh, there we go. There we go. Like I said, speaking of the devil there. Hey, a couple of good songs out there right now. We're going to have you uh, play them both today and the current single, uh, To Get a Girl, man, if you uh, haven't heard this. Uh, wow. Uh, just amazing baritone vocals. And my goodness, uh, man, if you're sitting in a live show with a drink in your hand and a, uh, a jukebox and him on stage, if he's by himself acoustically or with a band, it's it's like it's it's damn good out there. So I guess we'll uh, we'll start there with uh, Josiah and have you play that one. How's that? Yeah, yeah, I got I got two different guitar tunings, so I'm I'm, I'm changing weapons. I'll change to get a girl first. Yeah, You're spoiled over there. Yeah, there. well, well, I sing to get a girl. I sing it down a little bit low, so this one's tuned to full step down. And when you slap the capo on to full step tuning, it kind of gets a little wild, if you know what I mean. So yeah. I just thought, you know, I'll, I'll change guitars. Guitars. Here we go. This is my new single, uh, To Get a Girl. My name's Josiah Siska, and thank you to everyone that's been watching. Maybe I'm dreaming, writing you a song, thinking I can be the kind of someone that you Believing that a melody and a couple right rhymes Could help you steal your heart and maybe even make you mine I'm just living in your blue eyes hoping I got half a chance To turn those stars to candles, light a spark and watch you dance No, I ain't out here trying to change the whole world I'm just trying to get a girl Well, I ain't Bob Dylan But I got a guitar I got a few words for you That come straight from my heart And I could use a little harmony you could sing with me, be the missing piece that this song needs And maybe we could own the charts I'm just living in your blue eyes, hoping I got half a chance To turn those stars to candles, light a spark and watch you dance No, I ain't out here trying to change the whole world I'm just trying to get a girl who drives me crazy with that Caroline smile. The closest thing to heaven this boy's seen in quite a while. Yeah, girl, you drive me wild. I'm just living in your blue eyes, hoping I got half a chance. Turn those stars to candles, light a spark, and watch you dance a little close. Heaven knows I ain't trying to change the world. I'm just trying to get a girl. I'm just trying to get a girl. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Just like that voice out there, super smooth. And super finish. smooth and warm. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking right there the entire time. Ladies it's and like, gentlemen. He can do Ladies that and gentlemen, super smooth. There you smooth. go. <laughs>
<laughs> you had to get him to do that. No doubt. We were talking about it before the show. I said, man, we got to. I thought I was deep baritone wise, but this guy right here, I'm telling you, he, he can sing in the phone <laughs> from A to Z. My goodness, he could just, uh, Kirsty Krause, number. Brandon Morrell, number. He could just. Yes. Anything. I, don't, I can't I'll talk say. fast, though, like you can. You see, <laughs> I, if I talk, it's, it's quite slow. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes my my mouth goes faster than my brain, and that's the reasoning for that. <laughs> Lots of practice, my friend, too. And I guess, like people say, it's fast, and I try, I try to slow down and work on uh, pacing all the time. But it definitely oh no, it's great though. I hear every word you're saying very clear. It's crystal clear. You're it really good at it. Yeah, all my words will be blending. You'd get all kind of look like a look like a, d- a dyslexic essay. No, I'm dyslexic, so I can say that. <laughs> man, I tell you, well, the the song. Let's let's put it's it there, a song. man. Uh, that's a song. That's a piece of art. Uh, uh-huh. Good God, when you crafted that, uh, I, I tell you before the show too, Josiah. That's easily a top ten on any chart, if not a top five. That's man, how good that song you. is. And I'm sitting here playing it for my wife last night when I do all my show prep in advance the night before for the guests coming up the next day. And I went, this is probably going to be one of the best award-winning country artist that we ever have here on the show one of these days. Oh, man. He's going to step on that stage of the Grand Ole Opry and do a whole bunch of things because of that sound and that voice. Talk about this uh, this latest single, how excited you guys were to, I guess, put this together, work with a great team, and uh, get this out to your fans. Whew. I mean, when, when I got the song showed to me, I, it, it was so special. I had to cut it. I had to get it done right away as soon as possible, as quick as possible. So we went to Soundstage, and, and we recorded it here at the label at Black River. And um, the whole recording process for the vocals, I think we did the vocals in maybe, maybe one day. Uh, we just kind of went in and just got it. And when I listened back for the first time, you know, I, I was excited about the song and sing when I was presented it but when I got to hear my voice on it that was that was really special and um I kind of knew I was just like man I cannot wait for to get to hear this I can't wait for my listeners my fans the, my family my friends everybody uh to get to hear what I've been working on and and just how proud I am of that single and uh, all the stuff I'm, I've been working on that's going forward we're going to be releasing too but uh but I'm I'm just so excited about to get a girl and I'm so excited about uh having it out there, having my single out there, uh, the Spotify playlist that's been put on and Apple music playlists that we've gotten. And it's just, it's really, really exciting. And, um, it makes me so happy that, that my fans have something to listen to, um, have a couple songs to listen to out there. Awesome. We have Allison tuning in. She said, hello mm. from the smoking thighs restaurant in Nashville. I oh. have to check out that food. What, have you been there? Have I had any smoking thighs? No, but I got to I got to get some. I got to stop some. by there. Go there for lunch, maybe or dinner. Tell you what, I'd say. Well, the, the title of the restaurant ought to tell you that it's got damn good food. I'm sure it does. Yeah. Alice, got to have thighs. something. Sure. It's, it's got to have something. <laughs> there was a, you know, it reminds me of something funny here. It's, it's crazy. Uh, there was a place in Florida. Kirsty may have heard of this. She was just there uh, doing a little tour there. Um, Near Clearwater and the, the west side there. And of course, it's all over Florida, but it, it, the, the name is in the restaurant. The food is probably in the name. Smoky Bones. It's another good barbecue place mm. up there. The Smoky Bones is what it's called. You know with that, just like good smoking name. thighs, you got to have. You know Smoky Bones is going to be some <laughs> top-tier barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is a local place down there. So, Allison, next time we're there, we'd love to uh, come out there and do a show from Smoking Thighs and maybe uh, – Got somebody performing, and Kirsty and I can just do a show out there. We'd love hey, to. Hey, just give me a smoking thigh. I'll come. <laughs> <laughs> give go. me a plate full of them smoking thighs. I I, I'm with you on that, no doubt. Hey, talk about uh, because I love Dawn over at, at Black River. She's so fantastic. Oh, so sweet. She's yeah, great talent up there. So much talent on that particular uh, label. When you got that call, you got signed to Black River. I mean, what kind of went through your body? What emotions were you thinking at the time? Man, it was, it was nuts. Uh, I, I remember where I was. I was living in Madison at the time. I had my family in town because we did a, a presentation um, for the label. I did a live show presentation where I sing some of my own songs and I and I do some covers too. And we did that over at Belcourt, um, over mm-hmm. in Midtown. And uh, I had uh, the uh, guitarist and um, 
a couple other guys from the Sawyer Brown band uh, back in me that my, my uh, mentor, Mark Miller, uh, set up. So I had a good band, and then I had uh, I had my best friend, uh, Layla Tucker, singing harmonies with me. So I had some good harmonies. It was a, it was a pretty good show. It was pretty rocking. I felt good about it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we did the set, and the whole label was there. We had, uh, you know, it was packed out. It was awesome. The show went great. Um, I, it was the most fun I've had in a long time. And uh, I'll never forget. It was the night of, really, that I got the call from my from my manager, from Mark, uh, mm-hmm. telling me, "Hey, I, I think these guys are going to sign you." And mm-hmm. it was the it was the night after the show. All right, we went to Red Lobster, me and my family. <laughs> we were in the parking lot of Red Lobster in Madison, and uh, I got that call, and I just got I got super emotional. I mean, it was just to 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 get cut from my idol pick yourself up go to nashville at 18 years old and then sign your record deal you know and you're in 22 was when i signed it so um i've been waiting years for that moment so getting that moment was really special and then waiting you know about a year because of covid to release this single so mm-hmm. this moment has been really another one of those special moments for me yeah, you had a, a cake and everything, if I'm not mistaken. On that. You had like this welcome to the family cake and some other Aww. cool. <laughs> yeah, it was really I sweet. That. It was it was really <laughs> sweet. And um, the way it was brought up was they tried to hide it from me somehow, like that we're going to show up there to talk about things or something like that, I think, <laughs> um, for the first one. Uh, the, the first time that I went to the label house, I mean, because Mark, it was speculation that phone calls. I think they're going to sign you real soon. They're probably going to whatever. But then they, you know, they're having a meeting. Hey, they want to talk to you first and ask you this and that. So I show up to the meeting and uh, they bring out this cake that says, welcome to the family. And everyone from the label was there. And it was that was really sweet and special. And then I <laughs> FaceTime my mom and she's crying in a nail salon in Georgia. And it was it was great because they live out of town. So it was, it was, it was really special. That was, a, that was a cool thing, too. Love it. Hey, okay. back to that idol process, because uh, like you said, you weren't sure if you were going to audition at first, and then uh, girlfriend at the time, now fiance, you're probably saying... Uh, oh, no, no. The wife. No. The wife. No. Oh, no. None oh, of the above. None of the above. Okay. <laughs> now well, in the past, and I refer to as girlfriend. <laughs> girlfriend. Okay, okay. I wasn't sure. Hey, get it right here. Girlfriend of the past. You weren't sure if you were going to audition. Pushed it, but take me through the process of knowing, because I, I mean, I watch that religiously. That's one of the ones that I watch, because I love seeing uh, new talent immerse themselves, get on a show like that and be able to just uh, give themselves a platform they may not otherwise have. Going through that process of the the week type stuff or like what you're going to audition with, get the golden ticket, get to Hollywood. There's all these different loops and hoops, I guess you could say, that you jump through. Uh, there's different things they do, like the group round and they do all this stuff with the solo stuff. And now it's changed over the last four years because they're always doing something different. But I mean, doing that nerve wracking uh, for oh, you, man. being that young, and then, like, making the proper decisions with the songs and the wardrobe. Take me through doing something like that. Oh, and I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do that whatsoever. Now, I, oh, there's a story God. behind that. Oh, man. And I, I don't know if I clear for that. Ex-girlfriend. Sorry. I Ex-girlfriend. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Ex-girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Make sure, clarify, clarify. <laughs> uh, now make sure I clarified. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the process out in L.A., oh, man, yeah, it's freaking nerve-wracking because – I was 18. I got. I flew out there. I just turned 18. Went just kind of by myself. I told my parents, you know, I, I want to do this as me. Now, maybe that wasn't the smartest decision, but it, you know, it was a decision nonetheless. Um, so I get out there. Yeah, you know, it's nerve wracking. Song choice is tough. It's really tough. And group rounds was really tough because I tried to push myself too far. So I, I'd never sung really any pop songs before, nothing like that. And imagine just, you know, same goofy kid, but just short hair, a uh, flannel shirt, a ball cap, and just like some Costco blue jeans, right? And now now tell that kid that you, he's going to try and learn how to do some choreography to Bruno <laughs> Mars' Uptown Funk. And do I need to be rewatching an episode? Oh right no, now? no! I'll tell you what. I, I legitimately when I got when I got cut and I saw my footage on TV, I, I I like I said a prayer and I thanked God that they didn't show that. They just showed my suitcase leaving and like me messing up one word of a song that you really couldn't tell which one was. Oh, I was so happy that that wasn't showed. I'm sure it's archived somewhere and and maybe down the road if we it can get it from them, out. it'd be funny to watch. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it, it's not pretty. I wouldn't. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that, that's that when I got cut, though, was the group rounds. Um, group rounds. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, and I uh, everybody went through but me on my team, and I was so happy for everyone. I, you have no mm -hmm. idea. I was so happy for them. It was like a family group. It was nice, and I'm still uh, in touch and friends with uh, everyone that was in my group, and they're they're awesome people, and they can sing Bruno Mars a whole lot better than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Good stuff right there. Love that, yeah. too. Uh, I tell you, man, uh, both songs blew me away. Uh, the other one came out as a single last year, World Gone Mad, and uh, – Wow, if you don't get goosebumps for this one, uh, it's it's just another damn good song. What can I say about it? It's real country and the way it feels out there. You can check him out, josiasiska.com. And, of course, the singles are out there across all the digital uh, platforms with more music to come. My friend, uh, take it over, and uh, let's let's do another one. Yeah, yes. yeah. I'm going to take right. this earpiece out because it was falling out my ear as I was playing. <laughs> it was freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> this is uh, uh, my single called World Gone Mad. And I think I switched guitars, I did. <laughs> I want more money, honey. Tell me who don't. And then I could buy you that little house you want. Be nice not to worry. About what bills aren't paid And give you the life you always dreamed you'd have someday But for now, it can wait I'm content just to make it home to you It's enough that you know I've done all that I can do I've got everything just knowing that you have Face fall in a world gone mad. I wish I could tell you that I'll always be there. That every time you say goodbye, I don't get a little scared. Wish people weren't crazy. And I wish times were good. Wish we could leave our doors unlocked like our grandparents could But for now, it can wait I'm content just to make it home to you It's enough that you know I've done all that I can do I've got everything that you have A safe place to fall in a world gone mad I pray our children live to see the day When we all find a better way That seems so far away So for now, it can wait I'm content just to make it home to you It's enough that you know I've done all that I can do I've got everything Just knowing that you have A safe place to fall In a world gone mad A safe place to fall In a world gone mad The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Super smooth. And that was an, yeah, absolutely. That was a word from our sponsor, Bangtail Whiskey. You can download the easy app to get a bottle right to your door. We're talking mm -hmm. the big size. <clears throat> yeah. And we've already heard such tremendous feedback on the love for Bangtail Whiskey. So super happy to have them as a sponsor. And of course, Tour Guitars. 
Josiah Sissia here with us singing. One, yes, you want you want them to ship you a bottle? Uh, yeah, for sure. Hey. <laughs> I'll use it too. Awesome, awesome. Josiah Sissia here singing to us "A World Gone Mad." What a beautiful song! Talk to us about that song. The first time you heard it, what the response has been? Uh, it's just just beautiful. Man, so "World Gone Mad." So I signed my record deal and about two months later, COVID hits really bad. I mean, when I signed, we were still no mask. We were questioning, you know, is COVID even a big deal or not? Uh, when I signed, I think it was back a decent amount into 2020. Um, but uh, so, yeah, I signed my deal and and I just I was thinking, what, what's the first thing that I want people to hear that they can listen to right now and feel something important in a time where the world's kind of going crazy a little bit and maybe, you know, five, 10 years down the road, they might be able to listen to that again and, and, and be able to rate, relate to it. And Doug Johnson, um, who co-wrote that song, uh, who's also the A&R here at the label, um, he showed it to me. And when I heard it, I'm not even kidding. I probably learned the entire thing on the guitar and had the mel the melody memorized and half the lyrics down in less than five minutes. I mean, after the first listen, it was like putting on. It was like it was like someone showed me a pair of boots that I've been wearing for ten years, and I didn't know that I've been wearing them, and said, "Hey, put your put your foot in that. It might fit good." And I put it in, and it fits right. Um, <laughs> that's that's the only way to really explain that. And um, I think when we released it, was it was at a good time too. And um, I'm just uh, when people listen to it, they tell me that they they, they feel stuff and that they 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 can relate to it and it, and it, and it connects to them. And, and for me, that's, that's really special with having it out there and having people connecting to it. And, uh, I love it. It's romantic because it's, though it is about the world going mad and, and whatever, you know, it's, it's really a love song because the lyric is a safe place to fall on a world gone mad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't have everything and I don't need everything, but as long as you got a safe place to fall in a, in a world gone mad, that's, that's good enough for me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Doug Johnson, one of the greatest, Dave Gibson, too, is on that. He's incredible. And I think Walker Montgomery's on that song as well. Mm -hmm. um, some incredible songwriters put that together, and uh, I couldn't say no. <laughs> yeah. Great, great uh, songwriters. And it says, Don says, World Gone Bad makes me cry for all oh. the right reasons. So there you go. Yep. And uh, uh, Don tunes in. What a great, great show. So love you guys uh, tuning in there. You got any questions for Josiah? Feel free to leave them in the comment box, and we'll get to them as much as we can there before we get into our rapid fire segment. Yes, he's going to play one more. I was asked by a friend of mine. I'm going to have him do another one here on the show here just a little bit. It's going to be dealer's choice. So that's the best part of the uh, backstage pass. Johnny Cash, what will he choose? Stay tuned for that here on the show here. Texas Swig. You're like me. You love Coke. And that's one thing I was going to ask you. Oh, favorite, sorry. I didn't know if I was favorite allowed to soda. Have You're allowed, Yes, brother. It's your show. You do whatever you want to do. So <laughs> it's, it's uh, the favorite soda, as we say here in Texas, or they would say in the East Coast, pop or in Canada. Pop. What's the favorite soda for you? Is it Coke? Coca Cola, for sure. Coca Cola. Okay. <laughs> well, in Texas, they say Coke, don't they? Like, can I have a Coke? And then they say, "What do you?" Yeah, I, I I've been to places to do that too, but I know down here from uh, growing up here, it's been soda. Then I've been to Canada and the East Coast, and there's where I say pop. pop. You say pop. Well, okay, it's, My, uh, the... I think middle school teacher or high school teacher, she always pronounced it Coca Cola. CO, CO, <laughs> and then cola. And it grew on me. And like, I'm 50 50. It's either Coke or it's Coca Cola. And it's, yeah, yeah, it's strange, isn't it? <laughs> I'm right there with you. It's one of my favorites, too. Hey, after two great singles uh, and last year being the tough year it was for everybody, I know there's only so much you can let the cat out of the bag, but uh, talk about kind of what's next because I think there, the more people I talk to and the more that we talk about the sound, man, I'm ready for more. You guys have been writing, you've been doing a lot of things. Uh, behind the scenes, uh, what's next? I mean, you mentioned the plans for a full-length album, more singles. What, what are we looking at here in 2021? Well, I mean, right now it's to get a girl, and um, okay. that's really the main focus with everybody, okay. and that's where I'm focused at. So I'm just excited for everything with to get a girl that's going to be coming in the future and just, you know, playing. <laughs> I can't wait to get out there and play some live shows and go on stage and play in front of a crowd again. I mean, it's, it's so special to me to get to play for people. I mean, you can play online and you can do your shows online and put your cover videos up, but mm -hmm. there ain't nothing like being on a stage in front of a crowd in a room full of people. That's a big way to answer it too, no doubt. <laughs> out there too, but I know, man, there's some, there's some singles or some songs out there. I cannot wait to see what's even like you said, to get a girl, which is a fantastic, uh, single out there across all the digital platforms, but I know there's, there's more 
in this young man's camp. Well, I tell you what, here I got it is. something up my sleeve a little bit. You got, got some <laughs> things. I'll tell you, I got a, I got a, I got a southern gospel song that I wrote. Ooh, and okay, I'm gonna include okay. it on my first album whenever that is, and okay. I'm, I'm so excited for people to hear that. That's gonna be really cool. That's that's your teaser. <laughs> <laughs> that's a teaser right there. Good. Coming back on the show to definitely sing that for us whenever the uh, songs do come out. All right, this is the moment. Dealer's choice. What will he choose? The floor is all yours. Okay. Well, let's see it. I could play a cover. I could play Ooh. some. I took my earpiece out, so forgive me. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to play something that I wrote. I'm going to do one okay. that I wrote and some that right. I haven't recorded yet. I'm going to do the first song. And I, I just, I love this love song. It's such a pretty love song. Um, I'm going to do the, one of the first one of because I've written dozens and dozens of songs with Doug Johnson. And Doug Johnson wrote Three Wooden Crosses and Love Like mm -hmm. Crazy and She Won't Be Lonely Long and has produced amazing records. He produced uh, my, my first album, too, and all my songs on it. So uh, this is one of the first songs we wrote years ago. I was probably 18, 19 at the time. Uh, I wasn't signed with Black River yet. And uh, it's called With Every Breath I Take. I think it's just such a sweet little song. I want to share it. Here we go. Like the morning needs the sun For the whole wide world to see Yeah, that I'm the lucky one like today woke up for me To love you forever No matter how long it might take That's what I'm gonna do, babe With every breath I take And with every beat of my heart for as long as I live well, I'll wrap you up in my arms I'll give you all that I can give yeah, And I'll love you tomorrow Twice as hard as yesterday That's what I'm gonna do, babe With every breath I take like a night without the stars I know how sad it can be Yeah, my life was just as dark Until you shined your light on me So I'll love you forever No matter how long it might take That's what I'm gonna do, babe with every breath I take And with every beat of my heart For as long as I live I'll wrap you up in my arms I'll give you all that I can give And I'll love you tomorrow Twice as hard as yesterday that's what I'm gonna do, babe With every breath I take Yeah, I'll be loving you, babe With every breath I take mm -hmm. <laughs> The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base the front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Oh my gosh, what an absolute beautiful performance by Josiah Siska here on the Backstage Pass. Thank you for coming along and playing your tunes today, all presented by Bangtail Whiskey and, of course, tour guitars. Uh, this has been so much fun to be able to hear you. We need to get into some rapid fire. Now. We do. Because I'm, I'm almost a... speechless listening to the songs. I'm like, you know, I, I just... Oh, man. I, I was swaying. Y'all are so Superstar. Kind. I'm swaying, too. And I'm like, I was you know back here like, hmm. 
He's on fire. Hats <laughs> off, whatever pun you want to use. I'm out the door. He, he's wanted, man. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's hey, no one needs to see him. What's that Charlie Daniels song where he takes off his hat and all that <laughs> yeah. hair falls underneath? <laughs> oh, uh, I can't think of what you're talking about. I can't think of it. I'm almost speechless. So, Kirsten, you start rapid fire because. So, uh, yeah, I hope wow. we can <laughs> hear that song <laughs> in the future coming out. That's that's an amazing song. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna start start out with just something funny to try to try to put our minds away other than that song, but that was just so beautiful. Aww. So when you're ordering a pizza, Josiah, and it's just for you and you don't have to share with anybody else, what are we talking as far as toppings on your pizza? <laughs> <laughs> now, this is controversial and I don't care. <laughs> um it's pepperoni, yours. Okay. pepperoni, because I don't do Hawaiian, because I don't right. like the ham. It's just basic. It's simple. It's a great pizza. Thin crust, pepperoni, and pineapple. That's it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> why are and there way like, more people who love pineapple on pizza than I thought? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There, I always get so much crap from my friends. They always go, you eat pineapple on your pizza. That's disgusting. Oh, I'm not going to have none of that. But if it's just for me, oh, yeah, I, I get like double pineapple on that thing. It's good. <laughs> Pepperoni and double pineapple for Josiah. There we go. If anyone who's wondering, <laughs> there you go. And that's, and that's just his. I'm out on that. Cause I'm, <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. There he's not out. I'm out. Uh, Frank says, I met you a couple of years ago at the Bluebird. You stole yeah. the show that night, and you were an absolute gentleman to everyone there. So, Aww. Frank, thanks for Oh man! Shout out to Frank Thank you. For Shout out to Dave. Frank yeah. Bluebird Cafe, man. Yeah, man, man that yeah. was that was that was a short hair, Josiah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I, that's how I judge timelines in my life. I go, how long was my hair? Uh, <laughs> and and it it's not really how low was my voice because that hasn't changed really in the past five years. <laughs> <laughs> how All right. long was your uh, hair? <laughs> yeah. When you, when it's just you at the house, or like I said, you and and uh, the lady out there, what are y'all binge watching? What are you getting into? Oh man, what do I like to binge watch? Another thing, I get judged for it because I'm a I'm a country singer, but I'm also a millennial. So as weird and strange as it is, I love watching anime. Okay, okay, that's okay. A, that shouldn't be judged with that, man. It's your favorite program, just in shit. Yeah. It's the best. I binge yeah. it all the time, <laughs> and the old school stuff, Cowboy Bebop. That's the best TV show ever made. I like that. I like that. All right, uh, favorite food. Favorite Sorry, food. That's a loaded question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If I had to give you one thing, anything yeah. that's sweet and tangy, I love candy. I could eat candy all day. Like gas station candy, give me the mm -hmm. airheads with like the, the sour ones on that or mm -hmm. any of the above. That's all good stuff. Sour and now I want some candy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sour patch. <laughs> Swedish fish is like, yeah, it's... that's my thing. Oh, yeah. I'll go through a four pound bag in like two days. It's unhealthy. <laughs> it's extremely unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, when uh, when we can travel anywhere in the world, where are you looking forward to going? Like, what's on the bucket list? There's a lot of things on my bucket list. I would love to go to Japan. I think it'd be cool. I I, I love. I just. I, it's such a beautiful country. I I would love to go during the cherry blossom festival where all the, oh, the, yes. the cherry blossom petals fall down in the street and stuff. That's like something that you, I always watch those little videos on YouTube every now and then and and. It would be so cool to get to be there and see that. That would be really neat. But, but you know, p musically, I would love to go to Texas. I'd love to go to California. I'd love to go everywhere in the country. I want to I want to play all over the place. Nice. Yes. All right. I got one here. Uh, let's, let's put it this way. Okay. L greatest concert that you ever attended that you didn't have to perform at? What was the best live show you'd gone to as a fan? Man. Good question. That is a really good question. I've seen a lot of great performances. So I'll be honest. Damn, that's a really good question. <laughs> like <laughs> one of the one okay. that blew me away recently. So I went to see before COVID, maybe like I think this was the last show, one of the last stadium shows he did before COVID. I went and I saw Post Malone at the Bridge. Mm. And mm. when I talk about performance wise, just as an entertainer, that was one of the most incredible shows I've ever seen. He had flamethrowers coming up on the stage and Ooh. the vibe, the 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 ambiance in the crowd. I mean, every seat all the way up to the nosebleeds, every row on the top section full, packed out. I mean, the, the roof blew off the place. It was one of the most incredible performances I've ever seen. 
Cool. He literally Welcome. just announced like yesterday or today that he's doing a country. He's going to do a country album. So I know. Yeah. if he needs a song, Buckle I'd love up. to write one. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I have a music related question. What, do you what? remember the first song that you ever sang on stage? I, it was probably a worship song of some kind, old, old gospel hymn. Um, sang it on a church stage. I used to play in church. I played piano in church. And mm-hmm. then my, uh, at really young, I was like 12, 13. Um, I'm talking like four pews on each side. And my, my dad was oh. a pastor at the church and my mom sang with us. And it was a kind of family thing that we did as a kid. So I'd say, yes, yeah, old, old hymn, some old hymn. I like that. Good stuff out there, man. Well, this single is uh, blowing me away, making headlines out there. And you, you kind of wonder, uh, how much further the career is going to go. I think it's going to be an award-winning career uh, to, the to the Opry, <laughs> to the moon, and back. And uh, God, he's good, man. To get a girl's out there, world gone mad, and a whole bunch more in his, his uh, like I said, closet right now. You can't let the cat out of the bag. But there's a lot of cool stuff coming um, uh, down the road, especially 2021 into the next year. Abby says, uh, we saw you in your early days at Nets and absolutely love you. Uh, will you release Dear Mama? Oh, dear mama. That's a, that's that's a future one. Okay. That's a future, right. that's a future okay. one. That's a, future, okay. that's a special song to me. Yeah. That's a really special song to me. That's the, one of the first songs I ever wrote. I bet that. Oh. Love the love the comments. Thanks everybody for tuning in today. Give him a follow Josiah Siska on all the socials and uh josiahsiska.com. Man, you're one of our favorites. Just absolutely uh just huge, man. Love the music, love the song, love the single, everything about you, the entire story. Hey, congratulations on all the early success, the record deal. The publishing deal, uh, come back anytime, my friend. We'd love it. Oh, I would love to come back. I would love to be here. And and if we can do one of these in person in the future, if you guys ever do those, I'd love to sit there and get some of them thighs and that bang, bang and some bang tail and <laughs> hang out. Do it. <laughs> Let's do it, man. We got some plans for Nashville for 2022. Uh, like I said, just timing. The plan was to go this year, but, you know, it, like I said, the things, this thing called COVID standing in our way right now. But the plan <laughs> is to get there in February. Uh, to participate in our second uh, CRS uh, marathon up there at the Omni uh, in Nashville. So hoping to get there for CRS 2022, and that would be in person. So we'll see if we can uh, make that happen, depending on the COVID timeline. We just came off our first, yeah. we did the virtual event, so now we hope to get there uh, in person for next year. So we'll see uh, We'll see what happens, but we'd love to have you out wherever we're Let at. Let me know. And that's a great musical town that it is. For uh, Kirsty and the entire team and, and Tour Guitars and Bangtail, we'll talk to you guys on the flip side. Don't forget next week, Jeannie Seeley, is going to stop by on the next Tuesday night, 6 to 7. Myself, Zach Stone, Mike Babo, The Pitch, or episode two out there for Major League Baseball. We'll be coming at you, too, as well, for some cool stuff there for all the, I guess, uh, yeah, the four-game series there. Astros, A's, happy opening day for Major League Baseball. Enjoy some weekend. Happy Easter to everybody out there, too. Uh, we'll catch you guys on Monday. More episodes of the Backstage Pass, so stay tuned for more.